So as always with all of our webinars, first and foremost, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Steve Bennett, Senior Director of Competition and the lead um, individual for the kayaking competition this year. Um, hopefully you guys are all here for the kayaking finals and championship webinar. So again, thank you for taking your time to join us this evening. Um, I think I would be extremely shocked, but I don't want to jinx us that we will end much sooner than 715. But I do want to go through a few pieces of information leading into the finals. Before I get started, I do want to take a second to thank all of you as coaches, um, your assistant coaches and other volunteers within your delegation that um, were so gracious to also assist with the movement of the kayaks from the staging and back to their uh, delegation area. Um, that went tremendously um, smooth and tremendously well. Our head stager, Don Furlow, said that was the smoothest it's ever been. That's not our desire is to have you guys do that. But again, um, as a volunteer dependent organization, you never know uh, where you stand with volunteers on day of. Um, so we appreciate all of your, your patience and your work and getting everything set and, and uh, getting everything on time with that. <clears throat> Um, do want to recognize uh, Mike Sarnowski also joining us this evening, and hopefully Jack Brocious will be able to join us as well. Um, so uh, again, as you saw, this uh, session will be recorded and will be posted on the coaches resource page, as well as um, the slide deck and the link to that recording will be sent to you guys no later than Wednesday morning, but hopefully sooner than that. So again, um, the slides are going to be on this presentation. It's the same exact slides as, slides as we shared with you for the time trials regarding COVID. Nothing has changed from the time trials. So again, no vaccination requirement, no requirement of masks, um, although you're more than uh, welcome to wear them at your own discretion and your own wishes. So we will not go through the COVID protocol slides as they have not changed since time trials, but they are here for your reference as needed. Go over the schedule, um, some reminders about parking, uh, the same facility layout with the addition of awards, talk a little bit about logistics, course maps, and a few rule reminders, and then have any um, or allow for any questions um, as we go through. As a reminder, if you do have a question as we're going through the slide deck, uh, Mike will be monitoring those through the chat function. Feel free to do that. Otherwise, we'll wait till the end. And if we haven't addressed or uh, if you have questions after the information has been given, We'll address those uh, questions at the end. So again, these are just the COVID protocol slides. Again, I'm not going to go through that. Nothing has changed. So uh, we'll start with the kayak drop, drop schedule, drop off schedule. If unless I'm mistaken, the following counties left their kayaks and locked them up at Washington College uh, for the week. That was Anne Arundel, Frederick, Kent, St. Mary's. And I could not remember if Upper Shore left them or not. I'm not sure if we have a representative from the Upper Shore on. Um, but if so, you could unmute yourself and either confirm or deny that you left them. All right, moving on. So um, for the drop off this Saturday, um, this is the time schedule I have for delegations to drop off. Um, Montgomery County and Upper Shore, if needed, 730. Uh, Baltimore City and Lower Shore at 745, and Carroll and Harford at 8 o'clock. And again, we know with traffic and everything else, there may be a little switch or a little problematic uh, based on any uh, delays or whatever over the bridge or wherever you're coming from, but um, this is the kind of basic schedule we have for you. We'll work with you accordingly depending on your arrival, but this is kind of the schedule we're working with there. Hey, Steve, Bob from Baltimore. We we left ours also. Baltimore City left theirs. Okay, so you will you will definitely meet your time slot of 745 then. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Good deal. Thanks, Bob, for the clarification there. So Lower Shore, you are all set with 745 all by yourself. So there should not be any issues there. Thank you so much. A few things with uh, additional parking and other information there. Um, the handicapped parking spots, um, from what I saw, Zach met those individuals out when they pulled into the, um, the parking area. Um, those were handed out and placed on the dash. We also, unless there's somebody who, unless you were Baltimore City or Carroll County, 
your parking passes for handicapped spots res reserved um, were given to you at time trials. Make sure those individuals have them on their dash of their vehicle when they arrive. And it'll be the same thing as um, time trials. We'll have cones designated for those reserved parking places. Um, Baltimore City and Carroll County, um, if you could just send me an email with the names of the, the two individuals that uh, we were that we didn't capture leading into time trials, we'll make sure that uh, we either create parking passes for them or do something else on site and have that ready for them. And if I remember correctly, it was one for Carroll County and also one for Baltimore City. <clears throat> Um, one of the other things uh, that we did run into this weekend is there was at least one instance that I was made aware of, of individuals driving on the grass um, area to either go pick up equipment where their tents were or whatever. Um, the only area people can park is those who have in the grass is those who have the trailers where we designate you to park with your trailers. You cannot go anywhere on the grass other than a few staff and management team member up at the entrance that was uh, blocked off um, up where the college stores their, their crew and their, their equipment. But no one should be going anywhere else on the grass. If there are individuals who do that, um, we may be asked, we may very well ask those individuals to leave the facility and not return. And Washington College may also come to us as a Special Olympics Maryland organization to say, you violated our trust and now you cannot come back. So um, I hope and pray that it doesn't come to that point, but if you could please, please um, inform any of the spectators, family members or anybody else, you cannot leave that parking lot, the gravel area for any reason to drive on the grass unless you have my personal approval to do so, okay? So don't wanna to be too harsh on that, but we really, um, there's some wildflowers and some other things there for the beautification of Washington College. Um, you can only walk through the path, designated path areas, but no driving on the grass. If you see that occur, um, just uh, inform me of that, please. Uh, we wanna be ahead of that and, and make sure that doesn't happen. Here's the tentative schedule uh, we have for the championships. We talked about the drop-offs, volunteer registration, and the training for the volunteers. Delegation check-in, same as time trials, be at 845. Same location on the boathouse deck. Um, one head coach will be the person to report, to uh, inform us of any scratches, and also pick up your packets for the day. We'll have the coaches meeting. At 915, same location right there in the staging area under the tent or right near that tent. And all kayaks must be off the water. This is a little different. You have a little bit more time to, to do a course inspection. Um, uh, kayaks must be off the water and people in those kayaks off the water at 945. I think it's mentioned in a later slide, but if you um, have coaches out on the water with your athletes and competitors, that's fine and that's a requirement. But know that the coaches meeting is 915. So there's additional time out there if you have assistant coaches and everything else to go out there with the athletes and other competitors for the course inspection up until 945. Opening ceremony will begin roughly at 10. And then we'll start staging shortly thereafter, um, 1015, 1020, depending on the opening ceremony. Um, and you see the order of events there. Same as last time at time trials last weekend, we'll have the lunches available around 1130, but we'll make that announcement. Same process. Uh, you got the same orders as you had from time trials, and we'll notify you when those are available for pickup for one or two of your designees to come pick those up, and distribute those out to your um, officially registered delegation members. And again, um, as typical with kayaking, as an event or as divisions, um, finish the or come to the finish line uh, we'll have people to help escort them up to the awards area immediately after their race go right into the awards area receive their awards and then continue throughout the day <clears throat> there's a little bit more information about the course inspection again about 8 45 to 9 45 is when that'll be available um, one of the things that i uh, really want to stress is although that's the scheduled time for that um, please look for me 
or another management team member in a green polo shirt with a radio um, to confirm that are we able to go out? Um, and it's my fault for not explaining this last weekend, but although that's the time frame, we also need to make sure that we have um, the, the safety boats out on the water and that medical is present at the venue before anybody goes out on the water. So um, those of you who want to take advantage of that course inspection, sounds fine. Uh, again, just make sure you have approval from someone in a green polo shirt um, to say, yep, course is good, medical's here, go on out, um, and you can uh, check out the courses. Um, and again, like I said, coaches have to be out there, at least one coach out there with your athletes and competitors when you're doing the course inspection. And again, just a reminder that a coach, regardless of that, needs to be present at the coaches meeting. Um, it's basically up to your own personnel. We won't have volunteers necessarily there to help load in and out of the water if you do the course inspection. So that's upon you guys. And again, um, just a reminder, everyone has to be off the water, on the beach, no later than 945. Same basic layout uh, with the parking and uh, competition courses and where you park your trailers and all that. So nothing has changed uh, from time trials regarding that. The only um, difference here is where awards will be, which is at the boathouse, kind of um, in that big grass area where all the delegations um, have their tents and seating areas. It'll be up there on the deck of the boathouse, not on the front, but on the side there. Um, uh, where we had a couple uh where we had the awards in the past but it's right there it'll be des definitely um easy to see and easy to find there is a little breezeway there in between the buildings and that's where most likely staging will occur and then possibly inside the um the training room uh, that they have there at the boathouse so again that's really the only new news if you will in regards to layouts for the championships so registration, again, we talked about that same, just have one delegation member pick it up, usually the head coach. If you're unable to do that, you can have one designee, but they'll pick up everything, report scratches, et cetera, at that 845 timeframe. Um, that's when you can also, those of you who are offloading boats or uh, relabeling your crafts, if you will, uh, with the new bib numbers, um, that's when you guys can all be doing that with, the, with your assistants and other volunteers from your program. Again, what needs to be on those kayaks is the name of the individual, at least their last name, uh, the bib number, and the area and program um, from which they are coming, whether it's Frederick or Montgomery or whatever. So Montgomery S. Bennett, number 62. Okay. And again, just a reminder, I think everyone knows this, but the bib numbers will be different than what they had at time trial. So just make sure we, we are cognizant of that. Talked about the coaches meeting. And again, the opening ceremony, we will be looking for some um, updates, um, possibly the morning of in regards to people to help with a the Pledge of Allegiance, the coach's oath, and um, the athlete oath, etc. So um, just be aware, Zach Centron will be looking to handle that in the morning if we don't have it done prior to uh, the morning of. So again, no big deal on the on the trailer parking, same thing. They should all be done out there by 845, give or take. Um, again, with the tents, no, no vehicles down there to offload your tents in the grass area. Uh, but I think that went well. You guys did very well with giving each other some space and, and that kind of thing, sharing the, the, um, the space there with each other, no issues there. Um, once again, just a reminder, if you have anybody new coming for championships that were not there at time trials, we will notice that one tent up by the 100 meter finish line where we have a Special Olympics branded tent. Uh, please don't move that as we had happened in the past or uh, put other equipment up or around that area. Um, that's designated for our timers to make sure they have the space to do their job. Um, <clears throat> and again, I think there's plenty of room uh, this past weekend. Um, looked like everybody was enjoying themselves and hanging out and just enjoying the fine day that we had. So no issues there. What I will say is, is if we do have some some wind come through, which there's a chance we may have this weekend, um, if we ask you guys to take down your tents, uh, just just do so. Um, that's for a health and safety reason. If they get blown over, it could damage property, it could damage people, it could cause injuries, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll talk about weather in a minute. But just want to, we've had a, a situation in the past where 
Um, people did not think it was windy enough to take down their tents and have given us a little bit of grief, uh, not at kayaking, but again, just uh, look for everyone's cooperation on that. So again, as I mentioned earlier, um, hopefully we'll have uh, as many volunteers as we've had in the past to help with the movement of the boats in the staging area and back to the um, where you guys store them when they're not racing. Uh, but if not, again, just be prepared that we may be in that same situation this weekend. Um, and any help that you guys could do would be uh, much appreciated. Um, we also had, um, throughout the day, we had some timers who had to leave for various reasons and some other uh, volunteer positions that left. Sam Boyd, our director of volunteers, went around and asked if there were any family members who would help. And um, from what she had uh, communicated with me, many of the family members were ex ex uh, excited to help out and say, well, yeah, we'd be, we'd love to. We're just sitting over here reading books or whatever. Um, so if you have any family members who would be willing and able to assist, um, just let us know. Have them go report to Sam at Volunteer Check-In, and we'd love to uh, have them be engaged uh, with the competition as much as possible and any other needs we may have to fill in. <clears throat> um, and again, a reminder, I didn't think it wasn't a problem this, this past time trials because you guys were so good with helping with the, the boats and moving the kayaks here and there. But if we're in that situation where we don't need you to do that, uh, just a reminder that we do need one person from each program down in that tent just to help with staging uh, and making sure that the athletes are there when they need to be. But again, I, I, I commend you guys tremendously for your uh, stepping in and making sure that, that we got everything done that we needed to get done. Um, as well as please pass that uh, thank you along to your families and other members of your delegation who stepped in to help volunteer. Um, not, not our design, but what I will say is Don Furlow, our head staging, said that this was the smoothest it's ever been, like I said, and um, with less numbers of bodies. Um, but with your guys' help, she was exceedingly um, appreciative and wanted to commend you guys as well. So access to the dock, again, if you want to go out on the dock, uh, make sure you have a life jacket on. Um, and again, you can access that dock um, up to 945, but not during the competition. And um, not only could you access that with a life jacket, but also make sure that you just don't send anybody else on your delegation out there, um, athletes or other competitors without um, having you with them to point out some things like that. We will clear the dock at 945 as well as the beach area get ready for the opening ceremony and then um, the staging for the finals. Um, and again, um, that dock to, or that access to the dock is um, primarily um, just in that morning session unless like, you know, if you have any uh, quick swaps that we have to do with athletes trading out from a kayak here and there. Um, and just again, as for permission, we'll go out and get you taken care of. I don't think we've had any challenges with that in the past. So um, don't expect any there either. <clears throat> Um, lunches we already talked about. Um, the one thing we will try to do is get more um, dressing for the salad and packets of mustard and mayonnaise instead of one um, squeeze tube of mayonnaise and one squeeze tube of salad dressing. And Mike, I saw that you unmuted yourself. Didn't want to know if you had to. Um, uh, we have the extra salad dressing in hand. So. Gotcha. Well, not literally in my hand, but it's at the office. So. <laughs> gotcha. Um, if you have any extra mustard packets from your house and you want to bring them, feel free to bring them. Okay. Uh, we'll do our best. And I'm not sure uh, what the mix is. I know there's been some supply issues here and there, um, not with just the packets of mustard and ketchup um, in other places we've heard. But um, again, apologize for that little um, curveball. Uh, but again, appreciate your all's patience with that as well. This is one thing, again, we hope this isn't the case, but I think there was, I know there was a few coaches that I spoke to that we do not have the uh, volunteer group from the military base that has usually come to help with moving of the kayaks and also the teardown of the course at the end of the day. Um, it is a time consuming process and we know it's at the end of the day. If there is anyone, I know Don Bewick from St. Mary's, um, kudos or shout out to Don. Um, he has always stuck around and helped um, with the removal of the course. Um, 
But if there's anybody who is willing and able to do that, uh, we would really appreciate it. Um, Jack um, Brocious uh, spends at least 80 to 100 hours uh, with the lines, the connections to all the buoys down the course, the anchors, uh, the finish buoys, uh, readjusting the course, et cetera. Um, he has a bad back. I have a bad back. I know others of you have bad backs. But if there's anyone who, who would be willing to do that, uh, we'll start that process immediately after the last race. Um, the one thing I would um, kind of warn you, if you will, is if you're willing and able to do that, which we hope there's a few of you that, that could help us with that, please make sure you have an, a change of clothes or you're wearing something during that process that you don't care if it gets messy. Um, the reason for that is um, as we bring up the anchors and the lines, they've been out in the water for since August 4th. And a lot of the gunk gets on that, especially the anchors, and it can get a little dirty um, and get the drudge from the bottom of the water. Um, but again, um, we would look to see if there's anyone that could help us. Um, it's like I said, it's time consuming, but if we have the more if we have more people, the quicker it will go. And it is a little labor intensive. Um, but I don't want to put Jack in that situation with all the work he's done. So that's kind of a little um shout out to see if there's anyone we can get to help hopefully we won't need it um but it is uh it's at the end of the day we realize that everyone wants to get out of there but if you're willing to hang out for a little bit it'd be a, a big much appreciated okay how long do you expect that to take um it it is totally dependent on how many people we have um and how many boats we have usually it's about an hour to two hours, at least, depending on how many people we have and how many boats we have to go out. Um, it's the where you saw the uh, finish line markers with the posts out on the course. Um, mm -hmm. It's that and then pulling up the four different lanes. So we usually have one boat go out and unhook certain things and then people at the dock start reeling in those lines and then taking off the buoys um, as they come. So. It just really depends on how many people. If we only have like our three or four people as usual, it could take two hours. If we have different people who are doing different lines at a time, it, it'll go much quicker. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, George. Good question. Um, medical, um, same thing as uh, uh, time trials will be primarily located up at the boathouse dock. Um, at least that's where you can also get someone to get medical if need be. Um, Carlos was there this past weekend. I think there was only one report we had this past weekend. That's correct. Just one. And um, great guy. He's been with us uh, last year and this year um, is really thorough and in your good hands with with Carlos from uh, Free State Medical. Um, the other thing is, um, as we said at, at um, time trials, if Carlos is walking around or has been um, hey. Steve, just as a heads up, Carlos uh, is not uh, slotted to be with us. Pam Greenwood, our medical director, will be with us. Okay, good deal. So if if Pam is out and has been asked to go somewhere else to treat medical, um, as we mentioned at time trials, you can always get anybody with a radio, um, primarily anybody with one of the green polo shirts that we had this past weekend, get a hold of one of them, um, and we can definitely get medical services to you um, the quickest, but most likely... Um, they'll be hanging out there um, where you do your delegation check-in and where you pick up your lunches. And if you also want to pass that along um, to your family members, we know it's just not competitors um, and volunteers and management who may need medical. Um, let your family members know, hey, if you need medical, this is where to go, or this is who to look for, and they will contact medical to have them report uh, to wherever it's needed. So rain, inclement weather, weather updates. Um, I was in charge of weather this past weekend. Um, I'm not yet going to say I'm in charge with the weather this coming weekend. Uh, we'll continue to monitor. To monitor. Uh, we are looking at some rain, some wind, that kind of stuff. Um, just a reminder, if we do have any right now, it's not showing any thunderstorms, but if we have that uh, situation, We'll have to vacate, uh, report to your cars until notified, and then we'll bring you back um, after the 30-minute delay and, and, and continue on. Um, but just know that we are monitoring the weather. Uh, we have been monitoring it for about two weeks. 
um, and we'll continue out through this week. Um, we're working with our, our friends from Washington College and ourselves here at the state office to, to look at that. But um, as always, be prepared for any and all weather situations, windy, maybe a little chill in the air, rain, et cetera. Um, if there's any uh, updates uh, coming up to the day before, we will let you know of any changes in schedule or anything of that nature. But as of today, this is kind of what we're looking at. Um, about 83 degrees, chance of rain is about 54%. <clears throat> so it's hit or miss. Uh, we do have winds um, about five miles an hour pretty consistently they're, they're calling for um, throughout the day. At times, maybe up to 10 miles an hour, which could affect some of the, the, the water with a little bit of headwind or tailwind, as well as a little bit of uh, waves um, in the water. So again, just uh, prepare your competitors to be really stable in the water, and we'll see um, if there's any situations that we need to address prior to competition. Humidity is up to about 70%, um, but again, uh, as we're uh, communicating with our volunteers, be prepared for it to be raining throughout the day. We will continue the competition with light or moderate rain, um, so please let your family members and everybody know Highly, highly, highly recommend everybody come with good rain gear, okay? Um, here's the course. Again, no change here to the courses whatsoever. The same course layout as we had at time trials. Go through little rule reminders. Same racers command, racers ready, and that seemed to work very well. Time trials as it has in the past, and then the indicated indication of the start of the race with the air horn or the drop of the flag for those who have um, um, hearing impairments. And um, one of the things, we did have a one or two um, uh, racers flip. I know there was one that flipped before getting to the start line, but I um, think everything went well there. Our safety boats and others were very helpful and, and addressed it uh, safely and quickly. Um, but a reminder, if, if an athlete or a partner does fall out of their uh, craft during a race, uh, they'll be given the opportunity to get back in with possible assistance from safety boats or our safety kayakers. Um, and if they wish to continue the race, more than happy and welcome to do so. Um, but our safety boats also, depending upon the situation, um, have some judgmental or have, have some discretion there as well. Um, if an athlete says, no, I am done, get me out of here, I'm not doing this anymore, um, you know, we'll work with them. But if an athlete is um, ready to go and it's deemed that it's unsafe or I don't think they, they should be doing this, um, we'll leave that at the discretion of our folks out on the water. So just be, uh, be ready for that as well. But again, I think we, we did really well this past weekend and didn't have really any, any significant issues there. One of the things, um, again, just a reminder here, as far as if an athlete or a competitor goes outside of their lane during the competition without impeding another athlete, um, it's not a disqualification, but they have to stay in their lane or get back into their assigned lane and finish um, in that assigned lane um, at the end of the race uh, to not have a disqualification. If they're outside of their lane at the finish, it is a DQ, okay? Um, and again, um, if you have any situations where you think um, another athlete impeded upon your athlete um, that we might not have seen or caught, you do have a reasonable time to submit that protest and let us know and we'll address accordingly. And again, uh, just as a reminder, if you do find yourself in that situation, want to file a protest, that can be done at the control center, uh, which is right there at the uh, main dock area uh, where the delegation check-in is and all of that. And someone will be able to get you the protest form. And again, just, just do that as soon as humanly possible if you feel yourself or if you find yourself in that situation or wish to file a protest. Just a reminder on the 1K, um, the lead, uh, if someone is in front of you, they have the right of way on the turn um, and anyone behind them must yield to them around that turn, then once you make the turn, you can look at doing your passing. Um, 
similar to this past weekend for the 1K, the racers will be called up in their in their groups, if you will, for staging. We always have that. Uh, they'll be staged just like others and then brought up one at a time for their individual start race and be timed accordingly. Uh, Steve, thank you. One, one clarification on the 1K for folks with that, because um, I'm not sure if this is on another slide, but it's a little different from what you just said. So they will compete within... And Mike, you just froze. So I in their think divisions. You, you, uh, if I'm back, um, yeah, it's, it starts with the absolute fastest um, uh, boat and then goes to the slowest. That may not be in the order or have the divisions together, uh, but it's to minimize uh, passing uh, on the water. And I don't know if you heard me say that you froze quite a bit in there. Yeah. So yeah, just to reiterate that. Yeah, as Mike said, when they're called up, we start with the fastest racer from the time trials to the, to the slowest racer throughout the whole 1K. So again, just to reiterate that, it may not be the first three are in the same division, but it's fastest to slowest. So, um, you know, if anybody's saying, hey, the first three are division one, the second three are division two, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, they'll be intermixed in there based on uh, gender, their time and that kind of stuff. So but they will be awarded accordingly. And you'll see those printouts um, when we send those to you later this week um, with the divisions, your bib numbers and that kind of thing. Again, just a reminder on DQs, we talked about you know, basically the impeding is a possible DQ as well as the finishing outside of their lane is a DQ. So. Um, no, we had a, a few questions about that this past weekend, so just want to make sure that's in place. Um, also, if there's a maximum effort rule, or it used to be called the honest effort rule, um, that's where, if you're not familiar with that, you can talk to somebody um, at, at, the, at the event or during the coaches meeting, I'll take you aside, or feel free to send me an email or a phone call, but it's basically any athlete who has significantly improved their score or their time from time trials to finals possibly um, could be disqualified for not having the maximum effort rule during the time trials and having a significantly improved time, which would be um, a possible disqualification, not an automatic, but a possible disqualification if a protest is filed. Same thing if a protest is filed and it gets denied and you want to appeal that decision, you can do that at the same location, pretty much using the same paperwork and um, just putting a few additional notes on that. Nothing new here that we haven't talked about or you didn't have a time trial of the three lanes for everything except for the 1K, course inspection, uh, when people need to get off the water, the uniform, same thing. Um, I don't think we had any issues with uniforms or uh, sunglasses. Um, anything of that nature this past weekend. Um, one of the things that I don't think we talked about here um, in the time trials, or I don't think it's on one of these sides, but I highly recommended that uh, when the athletes go out on the course and get in their boats um, to go out on the water, go ahead and take their credential off. Um, and then when they get back on shore, put their credential back on. Okay. Steve, uh, we're not doing separate credentials for the competitors. They have oh. labels. Okay, my bad. Thank you for the clarification, Mike. So no need to take the label off. That's not going to get yeah. in their way. <laughs> no, no labels. Leave the labels on the bib number. Um, that was one other, uh, there was a question about what are the extra labels for um, in your packets? Those are just to have and use um, if a label becomes, uh, doesn't, uh, isn't on the bib number any longer, you need to replace it or whatever else. Those are for your use. Uh, a lot of coaches give those to family members so that they have, they know when their son or daughter or brother, sister, their family member is going to compete. So they're for whatever you want. Perfect. So again, as we, as we did this past, uh, leading up to time trials, we'll send you out the Bucci report or the time sequence, the, your delegation rosters, everything like that with their bib numbers, the time of the events, et cetera. Um, no later than Thursday night, but most likely before that. I know uh, some people go out on Thursday if you did take your kayaks home and relabel with the bib numbers and that kind of thing. So 
um, just be on the lookout for that. Um, and then similar to, similarly to time trials, stuff that'll be in your coaches packets when you check in at 845, be your delegation reports, um, labels, labels and the bibs. Um, the bibs will already have the labels on them. One thing I do want to stress there, I only noticed this once and it may have just uh, been a, a miss or maybe the, the safety pins um, didn't stick or whatever, but make sure that the bibs are pinned down in each one of the corners of the bibs. Um, there was one athlete whose bib kept flying up and bothering him on the neck because the bottom two, the bottom two corners of the bib were not safety pinned. Um, so just make sure those are um, pinned down in each of the four corners, not only because it can be a distraction for the athlete, but also our stagers and timers and everybody else need to see the bib um, on the course. Yeah, like, you should be you should have uh, more than four per bib number in your packet. But if for some reason there was an error or they get dropped in the grass, we'll have a thousand or more additional pins at uh at check-in so just come and grab some and uh and so wait till you need them but <laughs> you can come and grab some if you need uh any more perfect again nothing new here not going to uh, dwell on any of these topics um again just a reminder name of the athlete area program bib number on the kayak so that if you as coaches do not have to uh, move the boats here and there. It makes it easy for our volunteers to find those those boats and get them in place at the staging area. Again, same thing here. Nothing new. Don't want to belabor any of the packs or any of the points here. Um, so, just a reminder that I didn't see any infractions here. Legs must be in the kayak at all times. Um, you know, eat once you get on the water from the staging all the way around to the starting line and then to the finish before um, all the way through when you um, come up to um, get out of your kayak at the end of the races. Again, didn't didn't see any infractions that uh, I didn't see any, nor was I made aware of any. Um, but just a reminder, if you have family members who didn't come to time trials yourselves, any new coaches or whatever um, coming, just remind them no instruction to the athletes while they're out on the course in the races. Um, by all means, encouragement. Keep going. You got it. Go, 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 go. Good job. But no instruction as far as steer to your left, steer to your right, get back in your lane anything like that, um, that could be grounds for disqualification. And nobody wants that to happen, especially from a family member who did not know. So we want to make sure that you guys help us with that communication um, out to anybody who's spectating. The last thing we want to do is disqualify somebody for someone who thought they were doing good when in, in fact they were um, causing an athlete to be disqualified. Nobody wants that to happen. This is where I was talking about is where the awards location will take place. So again, that's right in the location where the delegations will have a little section out here blocked off to make uh, room for our awards presenters, our announcers um, and that kind of thing. Athletes will be up here on this um, um, dock or uh, porch area. Um, in, the in the case that it, is raining to the point where we can't have it out here we'll look to make arrangements inside the building these are if you're not familiar these are kind of like garage doors where they roll up and we'll look to have that open as much as possible um and again we'll play that one by ear i will let you guys know what we're looking to do um, if we can make the decision by the coaches meeting but again just be aware that that's the location and if need be we may look to move that inside um, with the awards, as the competitors finish their races, they'll be instructed to go directly to the awards area to get staged. Once the uh, times have been keyed in and the results are known, we'll come over, stage the athletes, and then get them ready for their awards, um, et cetera. One of the things that I'm not sure I've 
maybe I, I blew past it earlier in the presentation, but I know I had one or two questions earlier. As a reminder, um, I know Mike Sarnowski sent out the results either this morning or yesterday, I can't remember. Um, but anyone who was disqualified at time trials still can race in the finals, but they'll be grouped in a division for participation ribbon only. But just because they were DQ'd in the time trials doesn't mean they cannot come to the finals. They can absolutely come, showcase their skills, have another com com competitive experience, but just know they'll be uh, presented a participation award in a ribbon. Um, and also know that um, I, I think there are, well, I know there are some people on this call who have um, been with us in other events and I don't remember if we used these last year at Cocking. I don't think we did, but we have the the fifth. No, we started with Fall Sports Festival last okay. year. Okay. So um, I, if there is somebody who says I'm not coming to get one of those participation ribbons, um, I will say we are using the 50th anniversary custom awards um, that our uh, staff here have designed, working with our vendor. And they are really, really nice. And the participation ribbon, along with the other ribbons from fourth place to eighth place, um, are a real nice lanyard that come down and are joined um, with a very nice lapel pin. Um, so they are much better and significantly more dressy, if you will, um, awards than our typical standard Special Olympics awards. This is Again, Special Mix Maryland 50th anniversary award, although we're in our 52nd year, I think, Mike. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. We're extending, courtesy of COVID, we're extending our 50th celebration. Yeah. So, again, as Mike indicated, um, due to COVID, obviously, we weren't able to have our full-blown events uh, with as many competitors and participants as we had uh, would have in a normal year. So, we wanted everyone in every event um, to have an opportunity to receive one of the 50th anniversary awards. So, um, like I said, they're really, really nice. We've had a lot of compliments about those over the, the past year or so that we've been uh, able to use those um, very nice awards. So just wanted to make that plug in case somebody did have that mindset. So, Mike, at this time, I have not been looking at the chat. Um, to see if any questions have come in. Uh, no, actually, I don't. I mean, uh, folks can raise their hands now if they have questions, but uh, there have been no um, questions that I've seen come into the chat. So you may want to check and see if anybody sent one right to you. And it looks like Coach Gross has a question, though. And then Alan. Well, um, Mike, you send us papers that have the athletes' um, scores. Yes, from that the, was this time. yes. Was this morning. Yes. Um, they also have um, that also has their bib number on. Is that going to change? Yes. So the, the, the ones that are the results from the uh, uh, the time trials have, yes, have a bib number on there. That's in case. I mean, if you if you were keeping track of scores and the score sheets we gave you, you can find the bib number quickly uh, and so on. But uh, the other sheet. The one that shows the events that they're entered in, with their entry scores for this coming Saturday, there there shouldn't be any bid numbers. I'm pretty sure I zeroed the bid numbers out before I ran that. But so they'll, get, bid numbers. So they'll, they'll get a different number. Correct. Okay, yeah, just make it yeah, simple. And, yeah, and Pam, that will come out in the report that we give you no later than Thursday. Um, okay. You'll see the new bid numbers there for all of your athletes. Well, I just have some. Um, friends of my athletes who would like who are going to come and watch them so try to help them out very cool very good mm -hmm. they have particular numbers they wanted is that what you're asking <laughs> no uh, going to do that. that would be me <laughs> mine's nine remember that nine is that your softball number yes <laughs> gotcha okay good deal thank you pam um alan go ahead so the lunch time can you tell us where in the sequence of events the break for lunch will be? 
good question, Alan, and I don't want um, to give you information. We'll have to take yeah, so, uh, the uh, so the break uh, in terms of for the volunteers uh, and folks on the water where we had to shut down. Uh, that will probably be after the 100. Um, so the, it's the 500, then the 100, um, and uh, and then the uh, then the 200 and the 1K. I would guess just based in terms of how the the day goes uh it would be after the 100 is completed okay another timing question in the absence of a weather disruption do you think it's going to really think it's going to go as long as 5 45 no okay no we're just we're hedging our bets okay and we, lastly, we, we, we get sure bonus I, points if we're done early so <laughs> i'm sure i know the answer to this but before i tell the athlete i want to be absolutely positive um, I have one athlete in was in three rate was in the, the 200, the 500, and the 1K. He DQ'd in the 1K. I understand he could do a participation in the 1K, but he he could compete without any qualification in the 200 and the 500. Sure. Yep, correct. There are actually, some folks who may have DQ'd in the 200 but got a legitimate 500, and they can compete in the. Um, uh, they would get go for a participation ribbon in the 200 and for a, a place award in the 500 or vice versa. So okay, yeah, thank you. That they, they, that anything they got a legitimate non DQ score for, they can um uh, they can compete. Okay, thanks. Sure. Yeah, and I I think um, to your point, Alan. Um, I know this wasn't the question, just a clarification for other coaches. If you do have athletes that you find um we're in three races and going into the finals are only going to do two for whatever reason um you can report that either ahead of time or um, when you pick up your delegation packet as well as a scratch um so i know there were multiple athletes and multiple events again just let us know the sooner the better um but yeah good question thank you alan okay um any other questions I do not see anything in chat uh, or anybody electronically raising their hands. Um, George, you have your uh, your mic open. Were you looking to ask a question? Yeah, just just for clarification, lane one is that close to the shore? Lane one is the one close to the shore. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. With that, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think I'm giving you back a little bit more time. Um, this evening. Um, just a few other notes is if you have any scratches, you know, ahead of time, send them to me. Um, the sooner the better. Um, and also, if you have anyone um, who is willing to stay after to help clean up the courses, um, just let me know. You can send me an email. Best way is to give me a call. I think everyone has my cell number. If not, um, it's a 304 991 one four two one i hesitate to do that on the recording but um anyway i i that's my work number as well so um, yeah your cell number i think is on the last slide with um yeah it's true or was in the other one uh as far as the scratches go also i would anticipate that we will be doing the divisioning on wednesday morning so if you do have any scratches uh it's helpful to know before then so we're not factoring an athlete into divisions who is not actually going to be there. And we realize you may not know at this point, but if you do not know of anyone um, other than the three athletes who did not attend this past Saturday, um, if you do know of anyone, uh, you know, the, let us know if you could before, or say by Tuesday night, tomorrow night, um, and that would be helpful to not have them heated and then, you know, it'll affect other athletes. But, uh, cool. All right. Um, once again, just on behalf of our head stager, Don Furlow, and the others uh, on the management <laughs> team, again, big kudos to all of you as coaches and your other delegation members who were uh, willing and able to assist with the movement of the boats uh, from staging and the competition back to your storage area. Um, and um, thank you so much for a successful season up to this point. We hope to have a um, even or equally successful finals and championships and thank you for everything you guys have done up to this point and we'll do during the finals uh, we're here to help you if you have any questions just let us know and again thank you so much look forward to seeing everybody this weekend and um, have a great event